Hello and welcome to the updated version of my physics tutorial for Source Spin Maker. When I made my last video, I kept on getting a lot of questions on what I meant by certain things like you need to select a portion of time. I also got questions on certain things with the physics breaking or just simply not working. So I made a updated video that's quicker than the last one and goes a little bit more in depth on what I'm talking about. At the end, I try to explain the logic why you need to do certain things. And I know I'm still gonna have questions, but hopefully this will help answer the majority of some of the questions I was getting, because there were a lot of them that were pretty simple to answer. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So once you have your session loaded and you have your map loaded, I'm going to be using the stage map for this video. You're going to want to go ahead and create a camera. So you have your set area that you'll be working from. Now, if you don't like this camera frustrum that you see here, you can click on the display and hide it. However, I will keep it on for the duration of this video. It's easier to work with. With that being said, the next thing we're going to get is a model by clicking this plus here, or we can right click in this box. And the model we are going to be using will be the Pyro HWM, which is located under TF underscore movies. Now we're going to want to move the model away from the camera by clicking on the motion editor down here in the bottom left and we can just drag him away like that which to move models you have three different options you have your move your rotate and your screen options which i will give a quick demonstration on right now so the next thing we're going to do is give our model physics by right clicking and going down to rig physics now, before you run the simulation, you're going to have to head down to the motion editor and select a portion of time by holding left shift and then clicking and dragging the amount of time you want selected. For this demonstration, we're going to be using exactly 10 seconds. Now that you have your portion of time selected, you're going to go ahead and run the simulation and you'll get prompted with a little bar. Some of your models might have disappeared, don't worry, that's because the playhead is at the middle of the video. If your model disappears, that means that the physics actually worked. And in order to get your model back, just press upward arrow and it'll reappear. So now what you're going to want to do is go ahead and play it back, and as you can see, he falls to the floor. So now you have your physics rigged up to your model, however the problem is he falls to the floor, which brings us to the next step. We're going to need to create an artificial floor, so what I want to use is the Medic on Broken Wall found under TF underscore movies. This is my favorite prop to use since it's a relatively flat surface and covers a large area and makes it easy for setting a wall. So all you want to do is place it at the floor and get it underneath your model. And then once you have everything in place and the way you like it, what you're going to do is you're going to rig it with physics just like you did with your model. The only difference is this time we're not going to run the simulation, we're going to click on rigid bodies and apply something called kinematic. That will turn our wall, which we're using as the floor, into a static prop, which means it won't fall when we run the simulation, as you can see here. Now if you don't like the way that your artificial floor looks with the rest of the map and it just doesn't blend in with the floor, all you have to do is go and click this eye icon and it will disappear. This will hide the prop from the camera, but it will still interact with things that touch it. So as you can see here, it looks like the pyro is almost colliding with the floor. Now that we have the basics of how to set up a ragdoll and how to stop the ragdoll from falling, we're going to set up a quick little scene of a ragdoll colliding with another prop. And to do this, we're going to be using a simple barrel model from the regular TF folder, as well as a hay bale model. So once we have these two props, we're just going to position them to where they're on top of each other. We're going to put the barrel just above the floor so it's not actually clipping into the floor, right about there. And then we're going to move the hay bale just on top of the barrel. And then once we have both of these set up, we're going to go ahead and adjust our pyro so he is above them. This is going to show how a model interacts with other props that also have physics loaded. And now that our pyro is in position, just like last time, we're going to rig both the hay bale and the barrel with physics. However, this time, instead of turning it into a kinematic or a static prop, 
what we're going to do is we're going to change the shape of the barrel. The way shape works is there are two different presets. The far left is a cube shape and the far right is a sphere shape. I'm going to want to turn it to the far right for the barrel so it has more of a roll like a barrel would, whereas for the hay bale it will stay in a rectangle shape. You can also change the rotation, the bounce, and the energy of an object, however, I'm not going to be showing those in this video since it's more of a experimental thing that you can do. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and run the simulation, and when I play it back, we're going to see a nice collision with the barrel rolling off in a more of a sphere kind of way, and the hay bale flying off like a rigid rectangle. Obviously the big problem here is the barrel goes top to down instead of rolling on its side. You can change this by rotating the axis, I just decided not to for this video. Now real quick, a reminder, like I said, when you're using physics, make sure that you always select only a portion of time. And the reason I'm bringing this back up is I've had already a couple comments about people having this issue. I also figured I would go ahead and explain the reason why you need to do this. So my understanding is the way the physics works is when you load a big model, so the more bones a model has, the longer it takes to load. The same goes with the portion of time. If you have all of time selected, then it's trying to render the physics for all of time, which instantly crashes the program. Which could be wrong, but it's what I believe is happening. With that being set aside, I would also like to go into why you need to make your own artificial floor instead of it being able to register the floor. And that is simply, it just can't register that the floor exists since it's an extension. It needs another physics object that you make manually. And with those being out of the way, the last thing I would like to bring up, because this would hopefully help with certain crashes. I've been getting a lot of comments on custom models or workshop models that don't work with the physics. Either the physics just do not register when they click run simulation, or when they click rig physics, nothing happens. I actually had a comment on an Allosaurus model, kind of like this, where the problem was every time they ran the simulation, nothing happened. Which my best guess is for a model like the Allosaur that he was using, the amount of bones that it has crashed the program. Because like I said earlier, the more bones a model has, or the more time you have selected, the more the physics have to render for a longer period of time. And as you can see here, even though I got it to work, it's at 10 seconds, but because the amount of bones the model has, it's extremely laggy. Other times, there are just custom models that are simply not compatible with the physics rig that will happen, and unfortunately I don't know a workaround for that. However, with all that being said, this was the updated version of my physics tutorial. Hopefully it was a bit more in depth and helped answer some of the questions I was getting. If you still have questions about how to set up physics or you still encounter any errors, let me know. Also, if you have any suggestions on video ideas and tutorials, then let me know and I'm more than happy to do them. With all that being said, have a happy Halloween, and I will catch you in my next video.